When it comes to baking for their kids, no one does it better than mom. As a pastry instructor, published author, and award-winning chef, I feel it's important to always remember how it all started. Family traditions and baking with my mom is where it all began. In this series, I bring together my love of homemade bakes with a pinch of culinary creativity. Join me, Aaron McInnes, and my special guests as they share their family recipes with me on Baking It Up a Notch. Kippins is a beautiful community just outside the town of Stephenville. Bev is sharing her treat, a fudge oat bar, always a favorite at friend and family gatherings. No matter how old we get or how far we travel, nothing beats coming home and sitting down with a hot cup and a lovingly prepared treat. Today we're here with Bev in Kippins, and Bev has prepared for us a fudge oat bar. And I know I can't wait to try it, but let's get Bev to tell us all about it first. Well, I don't know where to begin other than to say that it's a recipe that my mom gave me a long time ago, and it's the most popular thing that I take to our quilting get-togethers and family festivities. It's a, yeah. The best of both worlds. So I am a big dateswear fan, but you tell me there's no dates in these even though No you're... dates, <laughs> and everybody wants the recipe, and when we're having any functions, that's the first question. Are you gonna bring your fudge squares? You're gonna bring those bars. So these are the fudge squares. Uh, well, I'll bite into bite it. Into I'll bite it. into it. <laughs> they are absolutely delicious, aren't they? Delicious. Mm. The toastiness of the oats, but then you get that chocolate gooey fudge in the middle, and then that crunch of the nuts. So I think, Bev, we take these squares, and instead of cutting them up as a square, we're gonna turn them into a fudge tart. Take that oat crumble and press it into a tart pan and get that chocolate fudge in there and that'll be the star of the show. Top it off with some nice, light, fluffy meringue that we'll toast up. I love them and I won't pig out on camera but behind the scenes I'll certainly eat some more with a cup of coffee. Good, good. Uh, but why don't we grab our aprons, Bev, and let's start baking it up a notch. Perfect. So here we are, we have all the ingredients to get going on the fudge tart, and you know the process to this, so mm -hmm. I'll put it all in the bowl, maybe, and you just kind of walk me through. Butter and sugar butter. cream first. Perfect, so we'll get butter and some brown sugar in there. Your egg. Perfect, thank you. And your vanilla. And the vanilla. In my kitchen, Bev, I don't know about you, but I measure with my heart, I don't. Oh yeah, a bit of this and a bit of that, <laughs> yep. Mm. Perfect. So, yep. do we so, put all our dry together first? Yeah. Oats in with well, some flour? Yep. Okay, some salt? Yep, and baking powder. Now, normally speaking, I know you put your walnuts in, in the, the fudge in the yeah. fudge filling, but what I like doing, especially if there's a filling in a tart, I want it to be nice and creamy mm. when you bite into it. So we're gonna move the nuts from the filling yep. into the base. Yep. Okay, so some walnuts that have already been pre-chopped up. Right. I like them chunky. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. So all yeah. that in there all at once. We have our cookie dough, not really cookie dough, I guess, our, our crumble Crum is all ready to go. Oh, it's perfect. So we're gonna press this into that pan. And right up, whoa. We're gonna throw it everywhere too while we're at it. <laughs> so growing up, Bev, were you, was your mom a baker? My mother was a baker. Right. And every meal there was dessert. <laughs> yeah, and even when we were kids, like we would go berry picking and come home and mom would have tarts. We'd pick the raspberries and she'd make nice. the tarts. Yeah. Or another big one she would make all the time for us was uh, butterscotch. The butterscotch pie filling in the tarts. Oh. But she always had something on the go. So that's kind of where your love of baking came from. Yeah. But I yeah. think that's good. So we're just going to put this aside while we make that fudge filling because instead of layering more crumble on top, we're just going to pour mm. that fudge right in there and bake yep. it off. Yeah. Good. All right, Bev, we're all cleaned up from making the crust, which looks beautiful. Now we're gonna get straight into the filling. Yep. We have a bowl of sweetened condensed milk, yep. chocolate, butter, vanilla, and a little secret ingredient just to spice it up a little bit more, yep. a shot of Bailey's. Mm. To the condensed milk, we're just gonna throw in yep. the chocolate. Yep. Throw that shot in there as well. About some more love. 
The vanilla. The vanilla. <laughs> and a tablespoon of butter. Right on. All right. We'll stir that up and we'll pop it in the microwave for 30, 40 seconds, 40 seconds and then yeah. we'll stir it and try it again. Yep. All right, I think we're there. All right, so we're just gonna take this delicious fudge and we're going to pour Good that Lord. Right Yum. in this tart. And we may not use the full amount. No, we'll we're gonna have some left over. We'll have some for the snacking. <gasps> So Bev, to bake this, we'll put it on a sheet pan just in case we spill a little bit in the oven or something. Just kind of makes it safer. Okay. And we have the oven preheated to what? 350. To 350, yeah. and we're gonna bake that for? About 30 minutes. All right, Bev, so I can already smell the chocolate tart. I don't mm. know if you can, but it's smelling delicious. While that finishes baking, let's get a meringue to put on top. And we're gonna put it over a double boiler. So we're just going to warm our egg whites and some sugar, so some egg whites. So these are pasteurized, but you could certainly use fresh. Your sugar, a bit of salt, salt, and we'll wait on the vanilla once we go to whip it up. So Bev, all I'm doing is just warming these up enough to dissolve the sugar. Well, you wanna keep it moving the whole time because we are overheat, so we yeah. don't want to cook those, but I think, yeah, we're there. So there, there's no grit in there now, it's no. all gone. So we're gonna go from there over to our mixer, switch to our whisk attachment for the yeah. mixer, and I'm just gonna put this on high and I'm gonna let it whip until it's nice and frothy. All right, I think we're good. Oh mm, yeah. But I've got my piping bag ready, down over my hand just to make it easier to fill. Light, pillowy meringue Yum. in there. Yum. <laughs> all in there now. All right, get that last little bit in the Yum. bag. Yep. Now, I'm using what's called a 1M piping tip. It's a pretty standard, if you ever see a nice swirl on top of a cupcake, that's mm. the piping tip that's used. It's a big okay. star shape. Yep. All right, so but we could get as fancy or as rustic with this as we want, but I'm gonna pipe on some of this meringue just to oh doll it up a little bit for those dinner parties that you're gonna have to bring this to now, <gasps> especially when all your friends see this on TV. Oh. You're done for then. All right, so we'll get oh. one more look. We had just... It looks almost like ice cream. Very much so. Yeah. And I'm gonna get you to do the torching honors. These things are finicky, but nothing like a good torch. Look at that. Oh man, toasted marshmallows. Gonna give smell me, it, yum. It's gonna give me campfire vibes here when we cut into it, I think. And you can get right in there and get that really toasted up. Don't mind a little burnt, burnt. area. No, that's right. Baking for your family and eating it together is so much fun. It's too bad it's got to be calories in it. <laughs> I think that looks, looks beautiful good. beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. So we'll pop it out to this tart pan. And now, mm, my goodness. we take this chocolate bar, grater, yeah. and we're just gonna get some chocolate curls. Oh my great Down on the top. And run wow. the mill chocolate bar. Look at those curls. Hey Bev, I don't know about you, but I am so ready to dig in. Yep, I am. <laughs> Would you like to do the honors or am I gonna do it? You do the oh, honors. I can do it, all right. So we're gonna just cut this where it's a rectangle pan. We'll just cut it into almost a bar, right between the layers of meringue there. Oh yeah, well you got that conveniently designated. <laughs> That's right. Oh man. Holy. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. You get the centerpiece. All the I got all the extra crust. You get all the extra filling. Mm. Look at the layer of fudge in there. Oh my! And the meringue. Oh. So let's dig in. Mmm. Wow. An elevated version of your, mm -hmm. your bar, which was delicious on its own, but now we've kind of like made it into a campfire s'mores. It's delicious. Certainly something you want to have a plated dinner, you wouldn't want to grab and go at Christmas time on a cookie tray, but. This is really good. So happy I was able to show you a different way to make your bars into something a little bit more upscale. Unbelievable, up how you can take that and turn it into that. It's <laughs> excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, Bev, thank you so much for inviting me into your kitchen today. It's been an absolute pleasure. I'm so glad you came and I learned a lot today. So that's good, that's a really good thing. So happy I was able to teach you a few things today. Thank you for joining us today, friends. Until next time, stay sweet. <laughs>